Well, it's just about 6.30, so should we get started? That sounds good. All right, thank you all for coming to our first public information meeting for the Village of North Aurora's Water Service Line Material Inventory. Gracias por uh, estar aquí en nuestra cita ahora del servicio de agua de, um, del, de la villa. So I, my name is Kristen Meehan. I'm with Engineering Enterprises, a consultant for the Village of North Aurora. And also on the call, we have John Laskowski, the Public Works Director for the Village of North Aurora. John, do you want to introduce a couple of other people we have? Oh, can you give me a moment to repeat? Yes. Okay. Uh, hola, soy uh, uh, Kristen Meehan. Este soy la empresaria de uh, ingeniería. Y aquí tenemos a... Uh, John uh, Lewiski, que es este, el director de servicio de público de la villa. Thank you, Kristen. Um, my name is John Laskowski. I'm with the Village of North Aurora and I'm the Public Works Director. Uh, Yo, John Lewiski, soy el director de um, públicos de aguas de la villa. Today we have with us um, Steve Bosco, our Village Administrator. Hoy tenemos a Steve Bosco, el administrador. And we have um, Dora Escobedo, who's going to be assisting us with translation today. Y aquí tienen a Dora Escobedo, que, vamos a, que voy a estar asistiendo en interpretar. In addition, we have Adam Hake, our, C, our water superintendent. Y también tenemos a uh, Adam Hake, el, um, I'm sorry, he's a... Um, water el, superintendent. Y es el superintendente del agua. Today, we're going to hear a presentation from EEI on the lead water services and the inventory the village plans on doing. Sí, hoy vamos a, a tener este, un representante de EEI. At the end of the presentation, there'll be time for questions and answers. Right now, I'd just like to turn it over to EEI. Sí, ahora um, al final de la presentación vamos a este, tener este, oportunidades para uh, preguntas. Thank you, John. Our agenda begins with background and legislation on water service lines, specifically in Illinois. Then we'll move on to a water service line overview. Then we'll get into the inventory and project location. We'll go through a tentative schedule and have plenty of times for question and answer at the end. Some Zoom rules we ask that you please remain on mute for the duration of the presentation. Uh, feel free to turn your camera on and please use the chat feature to submit questions, like we said in English or in Spanish, if that's what you're more comfortable with. We will get to those at the end. So moving into our background on the history of lead and water services, lead pipes were widely used up until the late 1980s. In 1986, the Safe Drinking Water Act outlawed the use of lead pipes and in 1991, EPA established the lead and copper rule. Uh, just last year, Illinois passed the Lead Service Line Replacement and Notification Act, and we'll get into more detail on this because this is what is affecting us right now. I also like to go through the health effects of lead, why we're all here. So lead mainly affects children and pregnant women, but can also affect adults. Um, and here is a list of all of those conditions. So the current legislation that communities in Illinois are preparing for is the Illinois Lead Service Line Replacement and Notification Act. It was passed last year and its effective date was January 1st of this year. And it focuses on addressing the service lines of unknown materials and the estimated 680,000 lead-based service lines in Illinois. Some of the highlights of that act, so it bans partial lead service line replacements. If any part of the lead service line needs to be removed or replaced, it is required that the entire lead service line be removed and replaced. Uh, it also outlines a number of notifications that communities are required to do under certain circumstances. Um, it also requires the lead service line inventory, which is what we're here today to talk about. It also requires a lead service line replacement plan that will be due in a couple of years. So that inventory that we're creating right now will help us 
um, complete that lead service line replacement plan. And it also outlines a little bit of funding, but more of that will hopefully come in the future. So here's a brief timeline of the water service line material inventory. In April of this year, the village started to develop its material inventory using historical knowledge. And in April of next year, they will be required to submit an updated material inventory. And in April of 2024, they will submit a final inventory. Now, both the updated and the final inventories must include the material for every service line in the system. It also is required to keep track of the number of lead service lines newly identified each year and the number of lead service lines replaced. So now we'll get into a water service line overview. Here's a helpful infographic to see what a service line looks like. It goes all the way from the water main and usually the street to the um, into your house, usually at the water meter and the shutoff valve, which is usually in your basement or if you're on a slab, it could be anywhere near one of the exterior walls of your home. In North Aurora, like most communities, they split private and public ownership at what we call the bee box. It's a valve that's usually located in your front yard. So these are the three most common service line materials. Uh, the one all the way on the left is lead. Like I said, it was installed prior to 1986. It looks dull gray and it's usually very soft compared to other metals. When you scrape it, it becomes shiny and a magnet won't stick to it and tapping it with the coin produces a dull noise. Copper is probably the easiest to identify. It looks like a penny. It's now the most widely used because it's corrosion resistant and impermeable. A magnet will not stick to it and tapping it with the coin produces a metallic ringing. Uh, the third type all the way on the right is galvanized. It's iron with zinc coating. It was commonly installed prior to 1970. Um, unlike lead, when you scrape it, it remains dull, but a magnet will stick to it and tapping it produces a metallic ringing as well. Also important to note here that if at any time you're having trouble identifying your service line materials, the village is here to help. So contact the village and we'll be happy to schedule an appointment to have somebody perform an evaluation in your home. So now we'll get into the details of the service line inventory. Uh, you're all here because we've identified a project area within the village. So anything after 1986 that we know was built, we can rule out as non-lead, but we've identified older homes in the village to send out this targeted survey to. So what's being asked of you? Next week, we will mail out a, another letter that will explain the online survey. It's very brief, and it can be taken either on a smartphone or tablet by scanning a QR code. It will also have a link that you can type in your desktop computer if you want to take it that way. Um, and you always can ask the village or EI for assistance. We'd be happy to take the survey over the phone or send somebody out to your house to help you identify the service line material. So here are some screenshots of the survey itself. There's a lot of pictures that help walk you through identifying the service line material, including pointing out on the lower left there where to test your service line, where it comes into your home. A number of pictures for help for helping identify if it is copper, additionally, if it's galvanized or lead. It's important to note that if you do identify lead in your home, if you have a lead service line, this does not mean you automatically have lead in your water. So here's some example photos of service lines and where to test. We can see this service line comes in through the floor. So a good place to test is right where that red arrow is pointing before the first shutoff valve. Another example also coming through the floor, this one's a little bit longer, so plenty of area to test between the floor area and the first shutoff valve. And this third example is actually a service line that comes through the wall, which is also very common. We can see that this is copper coming through the wall all the way to the first shutoff valve. 
So other information that we gather in this survey, we ask for your property address, owner and renter contact information if we need to contact you for any questions. And photos of the service line are not required, but greatly appreciated. It helps us uh, verify the service line or answer any questions you may have without coming out to your home. I do like to note that personal contact information and photos that you share with us are for village use only and will never be shared out outside of the village and their consulting engineer. So our next steps, like I said, next week we'll be mailing you another flyer that will outline how to take the survey. That survey will go through November 11th when it will close, and this will help the village complete its material inventory. The complete inventory will help the village plan for lead service line replacements in the future. Annual lead service line replacements are not required to begin until 2028, so it does give the village some time to plan out its strategies. And with that, I will open it up to questions. I don't I'd think just like to uh, add one thing too. Um, coming up in the future, we're going to have two more in-person meetings also discussing this subject. So. If you have any questions that may come up at a later date that perhaps you're not comfortable asking now or would feel more comfortable asking somebody in person in the future, um, we do have those opportunities. And the dates that those meetings are going to be held are Wednesday, October 19th at Village Hall and Thursday, November 3rd at 630 at Village Hall. So. Um, again, if you don't have any questions at the moment, or you'd like to meet with us in person, um, we'll be available in the future as well. Tienen preguntas? Is there anybody else from the village? Steve or Adam, do you have anything to add at this time? Uh, yeah, I could add one quick thing. I would just say that if anybody is going through the materials and has questions and doesn't want to come to the next meeting, uh, you can always ask and call our staff and, and talk to us and we'll try to help you through everything. We're unmuted. Oh. I can mute it again. No, no, oh, that's okay. I didn't know. What did you mean? ask? Did you ask? Are you going to chat next? I was just going to ask, but I, then they had a couple other people from the village offer comments, so I was okay. just kind of waiting my turn to butt them. So I just went down and looked. And just pop up on the we we can hear you now. So if you'd like to ask your question, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, a couple things. Uh, if we've identified that the um, pipe coming into the home is copper based, then is that a safe bet that the one from the village coming in onto the property is also copper based? Like, would there ever be a lead base meshed up to a copper pipe coming into the house? So I'll give that a shot first, and I'll let um, Adam or someone from EEI follow up behind me. Um, there are circumstances where that could happen, but most of those locations, um, we would we would be aware of the, the situation where that would happen is if the, the homeowner had replaced the service um, prior to the, maybe once before, then it's possible if they only replaced it to the valve um, that there may be a lead service from the B-Box to the village main, water main, but mm -hmm. that's probably a very unlikely circumstance. Okay. There are some areas in town that do have uh, lead services on the public side. Um, uh, and we have ran across coppers on the customer side, but that is out there a little bit. Uh, the reason I ask is um, I know that a number of years ago before I bought the house, um, the original homeowners had tied it into the city water. And so I'm not sure what date that occurred and whether or not the issue was addressed at that time. I suppose it depends on, on your specific address and 
uh, if there was any construction projects that had taken place. And the village would have records of that though, correct? Uh, yes, that's part of our inventory review that, yeah, okay. that would. I see a couple of questions came through on the chat line as well. Um, the two of the questions are asking um, about cost and the, the answer to that is not defined yet, but here's kind of the answer I can offer you is right now, um, the village is performing this inventory to get an understanding of the overall total cost of the project. So right now we don't know if there's 1300 lead services in town or 400 lead services in town. But once we get an idea of how many we have, we'll be able to present that number and an estimated cost to the village board and provide them with that information for them to direct us how to um, move forward with the project, whether that be um, a cost share, a subsidy, some um, cost mechanism, um, that the village would discuss at that village board meeting. Um, I had asked if Steve has anything to add to that response, feel free to. Sure, um, in the past, we, we did have a talk with the village board at a, one of our meetings and they did indicate that they were looking to, uh, I mean, this law has been talked about for a while and uh, we, we didn't really go too in depth about our water system. And, and basically as Adam, our water superintendent pointed out, most of the, the water main, um, you know, all the water main to my knowledge has no lead in it. And then when you're talking about the public services, we only have a few sections in town that would have that. Most of these are gonna be on the private side. So typically the village doesn't get involved on private expenses. However, given the magnitude of this, we've had the conversation publicly where the board has asked the staff to give them an estimate because uh, they show some interest in, in a cost or like John said, uh, potentially even funding the program. So uh, the estimated cost is probably in the millions. And so at this point, we're just trying to figure out what it is and, and go back to the board and see if there are ways that we can uh, assist. I see another question in the chat that says, what about those homes where the water lines come through the backyard? So in that circumstance, it's, it's really no different at this point. There are going to be questions uh, or there are going to be future projects in the village where we are going to be relocating the water main from the backyards to the streets and then reconnecting those water services. So um, if there are lead in those neighborhoods, that's an area where that will be addressed at the time those projects take place. Um, the next question we have is, will homeowner costs be covered by home insurance? And that's a question I don't know the answer to, and I'm gonna to defer to either um, someone from EEI or anybody else who might know more than I. Um, I'm Julie Morrison. I'm with Engineering Enterprises, um, project manager for uh, this particular project that we're working for with North Aurora. Um, that is an excellent question. It's I've, I've done um, multiple lead services, but I, I've never had this question asked. And um, I think that would be best served for your home insurance to ask your agent. But I have not come across an instance or scenario where I've been made aware that a home insurance that's been asked or answered or paid for by the home insurance company. I think it would be worthwhile for homeowners to investigate before just shelling out the cash. Um, will the village be offering any um, uh, cost-free uh, water testing to the homeowners in this red zones? I don't think they could hurt me. Um, the, oh, the answer to that question is we, we don't have a program right now that offers t free testing to the, the homeowners for your water service. Um, should you test the water service through um, and determine that it does have lead in it or you have a lead service. Um, right now, the village is working on getting some resources together for you to utilize to test or to contact so you could have your water tested if you choose to. Um, right now, the village doesn't have lead in its water supply when it's produced. The, the source of that water is or the lead in the water is coming from 
from the services as opposed to the main. Um, so the village isn't aware, I guess at this point, the village doesn't have um, a program where we can offer um, reimbursement for testing of an individual's water that, that, quality. I understand that. I mean, it's a small price for me to pay. Um, so you're saying that basically the water source is lead free, but the contamination could occur through the pipes. Is that what we're saying, basically? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, it might be beneficial for a, like a, that's what I was getting at, maybe a 10 second overview of where our water comes from and how it gets to your house through the mains and then the public service line and then your private service line. Um, John, do you want to take a shot at that? So the village water source comes from a deep well aquifer where where it's produced. Um, we have six wells in town and that water is drawn up through that aquifer into pipes, which then go to our treatment plant. At the treatment plant, we uh, treat that water to make sure it's in compliance with all the IEP re IEPA regulations, including chlorination to get rid of any pathogens and make sure the water is safe for drinking and as well as um, a process to remove any radium that occurs in that water source. Um, from that point, the water gets pumped from the treatment plants up into the water towers. Um, as water is used from residents and businesses throughout the community, that water gets drawn out of that water tower and is distributed to all the users on the system who need it. So um, after the water leads, leaves that water tower, it goes through the distribution pipes and from the distribution pipes, which the village maintains, it then um, enters into anybody who has uh, a service connected to our main. And again, those services are generally shared between the village um, uh, from the main to the initial shutoff valve is the village's responsibility. And from the shutoff valve to the residents would be then the, the homeowner's responsibility. It looks like we have um, some more questions occurring in the chat. Um, we have one, if I, have, if I decide to sell the house in the next two to three years, will a lien be put on the house to cover pipe replacement? Um, that's probably a, I'm not sure anybody on this call could answer that uh, question. I can, I can address that a little bit. Um, so I'm not aware of a, a lien that would be put on the house, but similar to lead-based paint, um, you are required to disclose that there is lead in your house. So it's treated just like lead-based paint. Now, when you say lead in the house, do you mean the piping or only if lead is actively in the drinking water? Uh, the lead piping. So yeah, it wouldn't require any testing. It would just be, okay. if, yes. I guess a follow-up question to that is what if any obligation is there to inform a prospective buyer of the possible lead problem? I think Kristen addressed that um, in her last response. Next question I see is where can you get your lead water or get your water tested for lead? Um, so I'm going to see if Adam might happen to know of any resources, if not, or if Julie or Kristen have any resources. Otherwise, what I would suggest for that question is maybe what the village can do is identify some, um, some laboratories that we currently use and post those to the website so um, residents could see who we're using. Uh, that's right, John. The the best thing that I could offer would be to to use a certified laboratory for drinking water now. Breaking up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like you broke up a little bit, Adam, but it sounds like that you were kind of in agreement with that response. So. Um, We'll go that route. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Is there, I'll open it up one more time. Is there any additional questions anybody might have? I think we got everything covered in the chat. Um, yeah, you know what, I'm sorry, I, I've got a question. Okay. I'm just wondering, does having a water softener improve the ability to take lead out of the water at all or make any difference? I think Adam's gonna give this one a try. Um, if he is able to get through with an answer, otherwise I'll jump in after and do my best. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, water softeners can't, well, it would be, you would be applying your softened water after your incoming service, I imagine. Um, softened water, well, home water softeners usually take hardness down to zero and that can create a more corrosive water. Um, inside of copper piping, it's usually not an issue, but you know, if, if you were softening water going for lead, you, you might increase your chance for, you know, a lead release. It just depends on, on what it does. No, that's not me. And I, I would like to piggyback on that a little bit, Adam. A lot of times what you see is you will have lead that comes um, from outside your home to inside your home. And then um, once you get to the first set of valves and meter, it, it a lot of times will transition to a different material. Sometimes it'll be galvanized on the, what I would, you know, on the downstream side of the meter after it's gone through the meter and then, and then it's distributed through your home, through your various um, fixtures. So just because you have lead um, upstream of your meter or between your foundation wall and your meter, it doesn't necessarily mean you have lead piping downstream of your meter. So if that's a concern, you can, you can test both sides of your meter to see um, what you have. Uh, in that particular instance, then the softened water wouldn't be um, that corrosive uh, environment from the softened water wouldn't be uh, going through lead pipes necessarily. It would might be going through galvanized. I think there is another question in the chat. Matt is asking, what about my ice or my cats? I'm going to speculate a little bit on the question and say that if the water is impacting or the the lead water service is entering your home probably before your freezer and that's where you're getting your ice from. There could be a chance that that water is in there or the lead may be in there as well. As far as cats go, I don't know the health effects on cats um, or if it's been studied, but um, there may be more information on the IEP web, IEPA website about that topic. As well as the hardness, does that affect the iron? Iron. Yeah. Donna, do you have another question? We can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> my husband was explaining that our, our specific water softener supposedly controls the amount of iron in the water, but I don't think that that's the same thing as controlling the amount of lead. I'm not sure that there is a water softener on the market that can mediate the actual lead content. Mm. I'm not aware of one, but it's not my area of specialty. But if there are filters out in the market, you can buy them at big box stores like uh, Home Depot Ooh. that have a certain rating. And Kristen, you're going to have to remind me what that rating in it, rating is if you know it off the top of the head, off the top of your head, or maybe Adam. But if you do, um, if you do the test, like the scratch test or the magnet test, and uh, think that you have lead and it does cause you concern and you haven't had time to um, and if you wanted to test your water but you know you're kind of in that interim between when you figured out you had a lead service and by the time you have a comfort level from your water lab test you can go and buy um, a filter you can have one that can attach directly to one of your faucets or you can buy a pitcher and they are rated by the uh, national standard by the government agency uh, that does filter out the lead from your water. We do, have, we do have a whole house filter that's right after the incoming line. Then you would need to talk to your manufacturer okay. um, to see of a, who provided that whole house filter to see if it meets the guidelines uh, set by 
the government for uh, lead removal. Okay. And your background, Julie, um, you say you're the project engineer, correct? Uh, Chris, yeah, I'm, I'm a project manager and project engineer. I've, and Kristen and I have worked on many lead uh, service line replacement projects. Mm -hmm. Are either of you a chemist by chance? I am not. I am okay. not a chemist. But okay. that's an I was excellent just question. Out of curiosity. Um, I, I did want to find out um, will the residents be getting a complete copy of this little presentation here, the slides? This presentation will be available online somewhere we, on the village website. So um, you'll be able to reference it again and, okay. and hear it if you miss something. Okay. I thought that's yeah. the, the flyer that's going to go out next week with the QR code and the link to the online survey mm -hmm. will indicate where this presentation is being saved. Oh, cool. oh, okay. That would be great. Thank you. Okay, um, I think we answered again the, the questions that came up in the chat. Um, if there's no other questions, um, again, please look for that next mailing um, of the inventory. And again, the, the next meeting dates will be on October 19th at 6.30. It's a Wednesday down at Village Hall. And on November 3rd, which is a Thursday at 630, also down at Village Hall. So at this point, I would just like to thank all of our participants and all the residents who came today to, to listen to us speak about this. Um, I'd like to thank EEI for doing this presentation for the village um, and my colleagues at the village for attending as well. I'm going to leave it to Steve to make a closing remarks if he has any. And I just have one quick one, John, and, and that is just a reminder that when we were going through this, um, he sent this notice out to 1300 homes or so. I mean, we're trying to make sure that we cover every possible area. So everyone who gets the notice doesn't, you know, automatically mean you have any lead services. You may have lead services, but we're trying to make sure that everybody who could be affected is aware. We want to provide information. But the most important thing is that we, we really want to create a robust program. And that information that we're getting from the residents, the feedback, is what helps us go to the village board and, and provide the, um, the inventory that will be uh, very accurate. And that will give us real numbers. And then we'll know exactly what we can do. So we do appreciate the fact that everyone is participating tonight. And we hope that more will participate in the future. Do not hesitate to call the village or EEI with questions about how this works. If you have any questions in between the meetings or after, please let us know. Yeah, I think I only have one more question. Well, they said it. Am I still on here? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, yeah, we can hear you. Go um, ahead. You got one more right, question, Donna? Placements will not even begin until 2028, correct? That's all, when, of this, all of this between now and the year 2028 is simply inventory purposes. Is that right? No, we're, I believe it's the village intention to get started working on the project before that. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm just curious if by chance anyone does discover lead in their potable water, I just want to be aware of how long we may be waiting that out. Sure. Well, I, can, I can touch on that real quick. Um, the way the village projects work uh, with the with large capital program projects like this, um, we evaluate different situations, whether it's the roads, the water mains, the sewer lines that we maintain, and then we put them in programs. This inventory, what it does is it provides, and we're assuming, I mean, you saw the map, so the map had one giant area. So the idea is that the inventory will provide us clusters, areas where we know that there is a high grouping of lead service lines. What that allows us to do is then design programs to you know, effectively attack those areas little by little so that we can start to um, remove them. So yeah. that's why the inventory is so important. Otherwise, we have over 6,000 housing units in town. So right. in order to make sure that we're planning appropriately, and, and I will say to John's point, the plan is to move faster than that. So that's why we're trying to do this now so we can get that inventory as soon as possible. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. And then you guys can prioritize the hot, hot zone, so to speak. Okay. I understand. Thank you. 
Okay, and I saw one last question came in on the chat. What about disclosure to renters? Um, That's a good question. I I don't know that the how that would work. I, I suppose that would be a, a agreement between both parties. Um, John, I can answer this question. Okay. So when we discover a lead service line under this new Illinois Act, the village will be required to notify not just the owner but the resident of the home that it is. Uh, served by a lead service line. So it, it will be available to renters. Okay. Thank you, Kristen. 